Myanmar is tradition-rich country, and she has a lot of folklores. Lots of children are listen those folklores as their bedtime story. I will be reading 30 Burmese tales written by Mao Tinao in this series. In most of those folklores, Rabbit is clever, rightful and knowledgeful character who always help disputes. And Rabbit as a symbol of judgment. In this third tale, I will be reading, Judge Rabbit. Mr. Clever and Mr. Stupid were neighbors, and the former had a cow, whereas the latter had a mare. One night, Clever's cow gave birth to a calf, and Stupid's mare gave birth to a colt. Clever, being a light sleeper, heard the bleating of the calf and the neighing of the colt. Taking a light, he went down to the cowshed to have a look. He noticed that there was no light in Stupid's stable. Guessing that Stupid had not been awakened by the neighing of the colt, Clever took the calf to the stable, and brought the colt to the cowshed. Then he went back to bed. Early, the next day, he went round the village, telling everybody that a strange and wonderful thing had happened, his cow had given birth to a colt. The villagers flocked to the cowshed, and gazed in wonder at the colt. By this time, Stupid had found the calf in his stable, and suspecting the truth, he came to Clever and accused him of stealing his colt. Clever denied, maintaining that by a strange freak of nature, his cow had given birth to a colt. But what about the calf in my stable? Asked Stupid indignantly. By a strange freak of nature also, suggested Clever sweetly, your mare must have given birth to a calf. Stupid appealed to the neighbors, who however admitted their inability to decide the dispute. So Stupid asked Clever to go with him to another village to find a judge. On the way, they met the rabbit and asked him to act as judge in their dispute. With pleasure, replied the rabbit. Stupid and Clever explained what the dispute was, and the rabbit said, I am busy now, but will fix a date for your case. I will meet you in your village at sunrise on the morning of the seventh day from now. Be ready with your witnesses. Stupid and Clever thanked the rabbit, and came back to their village. On the appointed day at sunrise, Stupid, Clever and the whole village assembled to await the coming of Judge Rabbit. The sun rose higher and higher until it was noon, but there was no Judge Rabbit. Noon passed and still there was no Judge Rabbit. It was only at sunset that the rabbit appeared. As it was so unusual for the rabbit to break his word, the villagers could not help asking why he did not come at the appointed time, although in ordinary circumstances they should, out of courtesy, have asked no questions of a judge. I am so sorry, replied Judge Rabbit, but I was delayed by an accident. As I was coming to you this morning, I saw a sandbank in the river on fire, and the whole day I have been carrying water in a wicker crate and pouring it on the fire to put it out. Clever, who took pride in his cleverness, thought that Judge Rabbit was trying to test the intelligence of the villagers. Sire Judge, said he brightly, how can a sandbank in the middle of the river be on fire, and how can water be carried in a wicker crate? It is against nature. I do not believe you. Quite right, Clever, replied Judge Rabbit calmly, how can a cow give birth to a colt, and how can a mare give birth to a calf? It is against nature. So take back your calf and give back the colt to your neighbor stupid. The villagers applauded the decision of Judge Rabbit, and from that day onwards they always chose the rabbit as their judge in all their disputes. That is the end of the tale, Judge Rabbit. Read by me Emma, Timber Music Channel. Please subscribe the Timber Channel, and click the bell button to know, when we upload new video.